What's up, guys? This is Photo Editor of FOTK. Uh, we're going to be starting a new uh, sorry, a new series of tutorials, um, which are the learning Maya, um, Autodesk Maya. I started learning this um, a few weeks ago because that's when I started university, and I always said I was going to be posting tutorials up for this um, when I could. So this is now uh, now going to start. Um, I'm you know because I'm learning it, I don't know everything. So if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them. Um, but if I can't, then I do apologise. But you know, as the weeks go on and I post more tutorials, we'll get into the good stuff, and you know, I'll learn as you learn. But the reason I'm posting these is because, um, you know, for my subscribers, I know there's plenty more out there, but hopefully these tutorials will be helpful to somebody. Um, so first of all, we're going to start off with a um, basic tutorial, learning the UI or the interface. Uh, looking at it, it's quite daunting. Um, I mean, you probably don't know what all the, half these buttons mean. I don't know what half these buttons mean, but um, I'm going to show you a few hotkeys, uh, you know, a few keyboard shortcuts, and how to sort of navigate your way around the program. Right. So, first of all, let's start with the viewport. Um, how to navigate yourself? Your sorry, sorry, yourself around um, here. So, if you click Alt, then you can use the left, right and middle mouse buttons to navigate. So if I hold Alt, I can click the left mouse button to rotate, uh, the right mouse button to zoom, and the scroll button, click that in to pan it around. So you can sort of, yeah, get different views and whatnot. So that's what the first thing. Um, up here, you've got the verse edges, faces, and the UVs and whatnot. Uh, you don't necessarily need this, but because I'm on a a course where I'll be making models for game engines you need as you know you need as few faces and edges and verts as possible in order for the game to run smoothly um, so you can choose to have this on or off if you go to oh, blimey I've got to try and find out now where is it it's display then you go to heads up display and it has poly count um, you can turn that on and off if you if you want but I'll just keep it on that might be useful for you um, but if not, you can turn it off. Um, with 2016, it might already be switched off, so you might have to turn it back on. It depends what version you're using. So um, it's a pretty pretty universal program um, compared to its other versions, so it shouldn't be that hard to find. Um, right, so we're going to move on. We're going to come down to here. So basically, like Cinema 4D, on the left-hand side, you've got your Move, Rotate, and Scale tools, and then your Selection. So... They're going to be very useful. Um, you're going to be using those ones all the time. So just remember those ones are there. Um, the two buttons that I'm going to run through down here is this one and this one. So if we click on that one, that comes up with our four different views. The top, perspective, front and side. Um, or another sh uh, shortcut for that. Hover your mouse over and click space. Or space and then go to front view. And that's how you change the different views. However... If you choose another one of these buttons, the space bar will be activated for that specific button. So if I chose this one and click space, 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 it'll open this one up. So I'd have to go back to the view and then click space. So basically the space bar activates the, you know, the previously pressed buttons on this side, only in this area. Um, I clicked on this one as well, this uh, called the outliner. Um, or the panel layout. I don't... At the bottom here, it has, you know, it names what the button is. I mean, it has outliner down there, but then it has panel layout in the big yellow box. And uh, basically, everything that's in your scene will be listed here. So this is very important as well. So if you want to group stuff together, keep your project nice and tidy. And I'd advise that because um, it saves you a lot of time. So I can click space. Oops, that's not right. There we go. Click space. Um, and then we can carry on moving around. So obviously at the bottom we've got the timeline um, and the play button. We're not going to run into that, but that's just where it is. Uh, you've got a layers section down here, which we'll move on to on another tutorial. Um, so you don't have to worry about that one just yet. And then here is where you have all your attributes. So if I now import a cube, so as you probably would have already guessed, it's quite simple. These are your base models, so your sphere cube. All you have to do is click on it and it's imported. And then as you can see on the right, we can bump the scale up to 10. Oops. There you go. Uh, maybe rotate it 45 degrees there. 
Um, add some segments, so I'll add 10 on each side. There you go, so that's... Um, sorry, you have to click, uh, select the object in order for these to show up. And then you can move it around, uh, oops, scale it further if you want to do it by hand, rotate it, and all that kind of good stuff. So delete that now. That shows our object panel. I don't know what really what to call it, but <laughs> you know you kind of guess what I mean. Um, and make sure you're on modeling as well. You got a drop down menu here, and you got rigging, animation. If you're using a previous version, it might be polygons instead of modeling. Um, so you just want to stick to modeling because if you change them, you get different tabs up here. So there's lots and lots of buttons involved in Maya, but you probably won't use half of them, so you wouldn't have to worry as much. Um, and then say I had a, a cube in here. The button's just below it, the small one's down here. These are basically the view, the viewport. Now I've already got that selected. This is what would be standard. This is what you'd see. Now I like to activate the wireframe, which is this button here, and that basically gives a clear outline of the edges. Um, I'll show you something maybe a bit later, quickly open up a scene that I'm working on. Um, it's just easier to see your detail. Um, and then again you can click this button here, which is the two squares overlapping each other. That's basically a 50% opacity, um, so you can sort of see through things, um, but sort of you still get your your depth for your for your cube. Um, it depends really what you want to use it for though, but it might just be handy to know. Um, and then at the top, if you're, say, modeling, you get all your tools here, so all your insert edge loops. And if you're familiar with, uh, familiar with modeling, these are the ones you'll be using. Um, but we'll get onto that in another tutorial. We'll go into these in a bit more detail when I come to the modeling tutorial. Um, and then you've got some more here, and then edit mesh, so you can merge things, extrude things. Um, the rest of it you won't really need to worry about, but if you want to just get to know Maya, start off with a few cubes, start playing around with it, modeling some little stuff, just from what you can make out yourself. Um, get a feel for the program. And another thing that may help you is at the top right, I think this is new to Cine uh, Cinema 40, sorry, Maya 2016, um, you got these buttons up here. If you want to click on the very left, this comes up with a very handy modeling toolkit. So if I want to grab this, I want to grab the point and line tool and the face tool. These ones are very important. So where in Cinema 4D, they'd be usually down here. They are now in this modeling toolkit. And then you can grab a face, you know, grab the lines, hold shift, grab two lines, and then bring it out. Some, you know, stuff like that. Oops, wrong one. Control Z. Um, have a little play around with it, guys. Um, if you want to start learning, just start off small. You know, obviously don't jump into anything big because you will come across problems. But um, you, you don't want to get filled with problems straight away. You want to gradually get into it and just deal with problems one by one. Um, and that's how you would learn. Uh, you can click drag tool. So then you can just like click and hold and then select multiple edges. Um, and then you've got all, obviously like you click the face tool. You can extrude it, move it up and out, stuff like that. Um, and then bevel it at the end. So yeah, have a little play around guys. That's as much as I'm going to do at the minute um, for this tutorial. It's just getting used to the interface. I've shown you where the key areas are for getting started. Have a little play around and I think the next tutorial we're going to come into the modeling basics. So peace out guys.